Hey everybody, welcome to Blockchain Central. Today we're going to summarize and recap the month of September and see what happened in the blockchain space in the last 30 days. Let's go. Since our video breakdown of Kick Interactive, we haven't covered this project much. Currently, the messaging app and their cryptocurrency Kin is involved in a very serious probe from the SEC regarding their 2017 initial coin offering. The SEC has been looking into the ICO, which, at the time, brought a neat sum of 100 million US dollars for over 18 months. The main accusation is that the company allegedly marketed the ICO as an investment, which means that the coin offering could be understood as a sale of a security. Additionally, the ICO was held without being registered, a proper procedure when selling securities. The money raised by selling the Kin coin was also used to finance a different service, Kick's messaging app, which caused even more problems with the SEC. The official position of the regulatory body is that by selling 100 million in securities without registering the offers or sales, Kick deprived investors of information to which they were legally entitled and prevented investors from making informed investment decisions. Ted Livingston, the CEO of Kick Interactive, says that the company is dedicated to fighting the claims, but as a result of the probe, was forced to close its messaging app and lay off over 70 employees. The SEC investigation is considered by some to be the signal that the SEC is going after cryptocurrencies and ICOs in general. If Kick manages to win that battle, it could mean that other projects will remain unharassed. Oh, and by the way, if you read the reports that Mr. Livingston has been sending drunk text messages about not wanting to go to jail, that is a total fake. Coindesk was tricked by a telegram troll. What remains to be seen is whether the SEC decides to go after more projects. We'll keep you posted. We also have more news pertaining to regulation. In September, the German government issued a national policy to explore blockchain technologies with a focus on digital identity, securities, and corporate finance. The document, already approved by Chancellor Angela Merkel, says that it will examine whether the blockchain-based digital identities provide clear added value compared to existing solutions and whether they can be designed in such a way that they comply with legal data protection requirements. Another potential application of the technology is IoT solutions, and the research into this area is also being encouraged. The program is a result of extensive exploration of the technology that involved 158 professionals and company representatives and ended up receiving 6,261 responses. Interestingly, the document also communicates a strongly negative attitude of the German government towards stablecoins. Although no specific project is quoted, we can safely assume that the claim is inspired by Facebook's Libra initiative. The wording of the document is relatively strong, implying that the federal government will work to ensure that stablecoins do not become an alternative to state currencies. There seems to be a wider excitement for blockchain being useful in the field of digital identity, as, according to reports, the government of Catalonia is working on a decentralized identity platform. The solution aims to give citizens control of their own data when interacting with online services. Catalonia is an autonomous community on the northeastern corner of Spain that includes, among other provinces, the city of Barcelona. The region's autonomy was established in 1979 by the Statute of Autonomy of Catalonia and confirmed in 2006. One example of a blockchain application for digital identity is proving that an individual is of legal age without the necessity to provide a specific date or place of birth, both details that can be considered sensitive. The platform dubbed Identicat will be based on a distributed ledger validated by the government and will aim to bring a new level of privacy and security to the Catalan community. Our team here at Blockchain Central believe strongly in the identity application of blockchains. We even made an entire video series dedicated to the topic, so we're happy to see this development. In other news, Facebook has revealed the details about the currency basket that will be the foundation of Libra. A report by Spiegel details that, in addition to a 50% involvement of the US dollar, the stablecoin will also be backed by a mix of Euro, Yen, British Pound, and the Singapore dollar. As we know, Facebook's initiative is facing severe regulatory backlash. It turns out, that it's not only the Germans that emphasize the economic risk associated with the introduction of stablecoin. The French Minister of Finance said that the nation plans to block Facebook's Libra cryptocurrency in the EU over concerns that it poses a threat to the sovereignty of national currencies. When it comes to adoption, MasterCard is looking to develop their own cross-border payment platform aimed at achieving faster settlement times. The project developed in partnership with R3, an enterprise-focused blockchain company, will be based on their Quarta Enterprise blockchain. The technology is a commercial version of the open-source Quarta architecture, a DLT solution that focuses heavily on privacy, security, and throughput. 
If implemented, the project can become a major competitor to Ripple, thanks to the involvement of the payment giant giving the project some serious momentum. More adoption news is also coming from the public sector, this time from Marshall Islands. The country, which is a US-associated state, is located in the Pacific Ocean near the equator and has been primarily relying on the US dollar as their currency. Now the state is looking to issue their own digital first currency that relies on a blockchain as its underlying architecture. What's interesting, the currency is said to have a predetermined and tamper-proof growth pattern for its money supply and have compliance integrated into the protocol. At the same time, it aims to maintain privacy for individuals. The project sounds interesting, so we'll be monitoring it closely. And finally, September saw a significant 20 million US dollar investment into Everledger, a provenance and authenticity focused UK blockchain startup made by industry giant Tencent. One of the first synergies between the companies is enabling WeChat users to buy and sell jewelry safely on the app. WeChat is, of course, a multi purpose messaging, social media, and mobile payment app developed by Tencent. Among other investors participating in the round, Bloomberg Beta, Rakuten, Fidelity, Graphene Ventures, and Vickers Venture Partners are mentioned. Okay, so that's it for this episode of September Recap. Let us know if you feel that we missed something. Before you go, please note that this content does not represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Also, check out our blog, link in the description below. You can also follow me on Instagram at TheBlueMantic to catch up with my other projects. See you in the next one.